All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the principle of cross-cutting relationships to solve for a sequence of events. What's important is that you realize that the principle of cross-cutting relationships states that any fault or intrusion is younger or newer than the strata it goes through. And what that means is this, for a little example, dike A right here has to have come after the sandstone, the conglomerate, and dike B right here, how do I know? It came after because it goes through all of those other guys. So it had to have come later. So just like any of the other problems that we worked, worked with, you need to start at the bottom. And the very first thing that happened in this diagram is the limestone. Why is the limestone here the very first thing? Because everything is, is either on top of it or goes through it. So it is the very first thing. Superposition says we're going to start at the bottom. Limestone's the very bottom. The second thing that happened is the sandstone. Why the sandstone? Because everything else either cuts through or goes on top of the sandstone. So the sandstone is number two. So first the limestone, then the sandstone. Then after that we have fault A. Why is fault A the third thing? because everything else from fault A is either on top of it or goes through other things that are above it. And what I mean by that is this. Here's fault A. It goes right up there to the conglomerate and then it stops. It does not go through the conglomerate. It doesn't cut it. So if we take a look at dike B, dike A, fault B, everything else either goes through or cuts through the conglomerate. And because fault A does not go through the conglomerate. It had to have been there before the conglomerate got there. And now through that whole discussion we actually just figured out what number four is. Number four has to be the conglomerate. Why is four the conglomerate? Because after the conglomerate cuts in, everything else either cuts through it, goes over it, goes under it, so number four must be the conglomerate. What's number five? Number five has to be fault B. Number five is fault B because, if you'll notice, dike B goes on top of it, so it can't be dike B. If you'll notice, dike A goes on top of dike B, so again, it can't be dike B. And if you also notice that the batholith goes on top of the fault, so the batholith had, had to have come after. Number six is the batholith. Why the batholith? It's the batholith because the dike B goes on top of it, and all the same other reasons. Dyke A goes on top of Dyke B. What's number seven? We've already figured out the answer. It's Dyke B because it goes on top of the batholith, but it is still under Dyke A. So Dyke A is next at number eight. And then the very last thing is going to be the shale, which is on the very top. Again, when you do these problems, you need to ask yourself, what is going on top of what? What is under what? And then you'll be able to put these together pretty easily. There's your answer key, and that's how you solve it.